welcome friends to the course marketing research and analysis. I hope uh, uh, you are understanding the concept of uh, non-parametric tests and its utility in uh, research, right. Many a times people uh, uh, they have uh, they, do, they try to ignore the non-parametric ones thinking they are less powerful, yeah that is that is not wrong, non-parametric tests are comparab uh, in comparison to the parametric ones they are less powerful, but then when the data does not follow uh, uh, have the requirements of a normal distribution and does not have the requirements of a parametric test, it, it cannot be done, a parametric test cannot be done. So, you have no options, but you have to continue with a non-parametric test and in that condition the non-parametric test is the most apt tests, right. So, uh, you can even uh, you can uh, if your data is not normal you can easily do some non-parametric test and can show it in your research work in your publications and in your maybe in your thesis. Okay. So, uh, uh, some of the non-parametric tests we have already covered are like the sign test, the Wilcoxon sign rank test, the man Whitney test and uh, the Spearman's correlation test which is a test of association right and uh, it talks about the strength of relationship between two variables which are non-normal in nature. But and uh, in the last uh, lecture we were uh, we had started with the one of the most powerful tests called the chi-square test. The chi-square test as I said is a test of association between two nominal variables uh, which are uh, two variables which are nominal in nature and it helps to understand ki whether there is any relationship or any association between the two variables right. So, let us say in your questionnaire many a times I have seen students collecting data like for example, what is your uh, religion and what is your let us say income or let us say what is your occupation and what is your income or let us say and income can be taken as only a ordinal variable also right or let us say what is your religion and what is your let us say or uh, which place you come from let us say which place you come from and your uh, 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 level of hygiene. Now, both are uh, data which are nominal in nature your country of origin is also a uh, nominal val uh, variable and your level of hygiene is also a nominal variable. So, in such a condition when you have such data we uh, should not be uh, you know leaving the data and we should we can uh, do some tests and check ki whether there is any association between such kind of uh, variables. So, in such conditions the chi-square test comes into play right. So, uh, we had uh, discussed about the chi-square distribution which is a right skewed distribution and I said as the number of degrees of freedom which is uh, calculated by the figure r minus 1 into c minus 1. So, what is r? r is the row c is the column when you multiply these two factors it gives you the degree of freedom. So, as the degree of freedom goes on increasing the the chi square distribution which actually is like this something like this tends to become more of a normal in nature. Okay. So, uh, this is what uh, 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 we had said. So, today what we will do is we will start with an example of the chi square test. So, uh, I have already explained the chi square test and how you should be going about. So, uh, if you just remember the chi square formula. So, the formula was observed frequency minus expected frequency square right the, the summation of this divided by the expected frequency right. So, this is what was the formula. So, in this case let us take uh, this problem 200 randomly selected adults were asked whether TV shows as a whole are primarily entertaining, educational or a waste of time. So, many a times in your homes also this discussion might be going on, parents must be saying the TV is a waste because it is uh, you know uh, the, the children are wasting their time, somebody must be saying, somebody might be saying no, no there are so many educational programs, so they are learning uh, sometimes somebody says it is only just for entertainment. The respondents were categorized by gender, okay. so female and male. Okay. The responses are given in the following, some people who said entertaining are where females 52 females said it is entertaining in nature, 28 males said it is entertaining in nature. When it came to educational the opinion 28 females said it is educational in nature, only 12 males said it is educational in nature. When it came to whether it is a waste of time or not. 30 females felt it is a waste of time, TV is a waste of time, but 
on the same condition same case 50 males thought it is a waste of time right. So, when you take uh, when you these are all the observed frequencies correct and the total if you count 52 plus 28 plus 30 how much 52 60 70 80 plus 30, 110 28 plus 12 plus 50 that comes to 20 30 40 50 90. Similarly, this side 50 70 80 40 and 80 right. So, these are all uh, known to us and the overall total if you see this 80 plus 40 plus 80 1 200 110 plus 90 200. So, the question here is is this con evidence convincing that there is a relationship between gender and opinion in the population interest. So, what do you think from a visible from a just a you know from watching this data you might be able to predict something, but that cannot be justified right. So, we have to statistically check and we know that this data is just a nominal data. So, a normal uh, distribution does not hold true. So, parameter tests are not allowed right. So, how do we go further? Let us assume the null hypothesis that the opinion of adults is independent of gender that means, gender has no impact right male and female. So, what male says and what female says there is no difference it is more or less the same. Now, we build a contingency table. So, what is this contingency table we said there are two genders male female and three opinions. So, a table is formed which is called a contingency table of 2 into 3 the degrees of freedom is how much now r minus 1 into c minus 1. So, 2 minus 1 into 3 minus 1 that is equal to 2 ok. So, we will have to calculate only two expected frequencies and the other four can be automatically determined let us see how. So, the expected frequency for the first one first cell let us say this this one right is rho total. So, which was how much let us uh, bring it here 110 90 110 90 that was 80 40 80 80 40 80 ok. So, this case so how much it is 110 into 80 divided by 200. Now, this case how much 110 into 40 divided by sorry 200 ok. This case 110 into 80 divided by 200. Similarly, this case 90 into 80 divided by 200 this one 90 into 40 divided by 200 third one 90 into 80 divided by 200. Now, if you see so the expected values for each cell is now given 44 22 so 100 into 80 let us see. So, 11 8 is 88 divided by 2 44 right. So, similarly 22 now E 1 3 is 44 this is 36. So, you can just simply calculate right 18 and 30. So, every cell can be calculated. So, and the expected value has uh, now you have got the expected value. So, the now the expected value frequency looks like this male enter who feel it is entertaining is 44 and female 36 educational 22 males feel it is educational 18 females feel it is educational as per the expected frequency waste of time 44 36. So, this is there right now we will calculate the chi square value. Now, this is the observed value we have this right this is the expected we have calculated. So, observed minus expected is equal to 52 minus 44. So, how much 58 28 minus 22 6 30 minus 44 14 right. So, this should be minus right this is 28 minus 36. So, 8 right. So, 28 minus 36 is minus 8 sorry minus 8 this 12 minus 18 minus 6 50 minus 36 14 right. So, now we create the square of it. So, 8 square 64 6 36 14 196 8 64 36 196. Now, the final result this is what is of interest to us is the chi square. So, chi square is equal is this observed minus expected square divided by the expected. So, that is 44 in this case right divided by expected is 22 in this case. So, when you do this you get these values 
correct. So, each one of them. So, the total chi square value is 16.766. Okay. So, the critical value for chi square is equal to 5.99 when it when you take a uh, uh, when the when the alpha level is 5 percent or 0 0.05 the table value for the chi square uh, distribution or the chi square distribution the table value is is at a degree of freedom 2 is equal to 5.99 that you can check from any uh, uh, chi square distribution table taking the degree of freedom as 2 and level of significance as 5 you will find it is 5.99. So, since the calculated value of chi square is so it is something right. So, your calculated value is uh, uh, here somewhere let us say is 16.766 and what is your chi square table value now only 5.99. So, it is more it is going way beyond right. So, the null hypothesis is going beyond the acceptance region and it is into the rejection zone. So, this is the rejection zone from this side. So, the null hypothesis is rejected. So, what does it mean? It means we conclude that the opinion of adults is not independent of gender that means we can say easily that the gender the, the opinion of male and the opinion of female are not same but they are different okay so this is the first utility of the chi square test now chi square test is also used as a goodness of fit test right so what is this goodness of fit let's see the goodness of fit is a very important uh, statistical uh, you know it has a utility the chi square statistics can be used to determine whether certain models fit the observed data in fact when you talk about structural equation modeling and higher uh, you know uh, 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 statistical tests you will realize that the basic algorithm ba is based on again the chi square where the expected model and the observed model are compared and lesser the difference the more the stronger the model and higher the difference the weaker the model right so this is used in many such statistical tests so what it says it helps in understanding whether the uh, you know the observed data it, 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 it determines the whether the models fit the observed data. So, whatever data you have observed you have got in hand whether your model is fitting to that data or not. Okay. So, what is this goodness of it again a statistical test conducted to determine how closely the observed frequencies fit those predicted by a hypothesized probability distribution or an expected one let us say. To apply this test a particular theoretical distribution is first hypothesized for a given population and the test is carried out to determine whether or not the sample data could have come from the population of interest. So, you first hypothesize and then you uh, try to see whether it is has come from the same population or it has not come. The observed frequencies come from the sample and the expected frequency value comes from the theoretical hypothesized probability. So, as I said it is a comparison between the observed versus the expected. The goodness of it now focuses on the differences between the observed values and the expected values. Large differences between the two distributions throw doubt on the assumption that the hypothesized theoretical distribution is correct. That means, that it has come from the same population this hypothesis is doubtful in nature. Okay. On the other hand small differences or if they are close equal then the two distributions may be assumed to be resulting from sampling error right. So, this is what it talks about. So, let us see check the goodness of fit test. The general steps to conduct a goodness of test uh, fit test is as given. First is state the null and the alternate hypothesis. So, what is the null and the alternate hypothesis? Null is no difference exists between the observed and the expected set of frequencies. So, there is no difference. Okay. Alternate says there is a difference between the observed and the expected. Now, select a random sample and record the observed frequencies for each category. Calculate the expected frequency in each category by multiplying the probability by the sample size. Okay. We will do that, we will see a problem. Now, you have calculated the same thing, right. Now, using a level of significance and degree of freedom, provided that the, provided that the number of expected frequencies are 5 or more at least. So, each cell has to have at least 5. Uh, values the 5 you know the, uh, the size has to be 5 or more right. Okay. Now, compare the critical cat, uh, calculator and the table value and then we do the same thing as earlier. Let us take this case. A personal manager is interested in trying to determine whether absenteeism is greater on one day of the week than 
on another that means is the attendance the same throughout the week or is it that in one particular day maybe it is a Monday where people are lazy enough to not to you know come on time. So, uh, or it is a Friday or something you know his records for the past year show the following sample distribution Monday number of absent is 66 Tuesday 56 people absent. So, as I said maybe after the Sunday people have not yet come out of their you know the laziness is still in there. So, Wednesday 54, Thursday 48. Now, Friday is interesting again 75. So, some people have maybe the Saturdays and off. So, they have taken an extended holiday and taken a Friday as a holiday also. Test whether the absence is uniformly distributed over the week or not. Okay. Let us assume the null hypothesis is that the absence is uniformly distributed. So, obviously, S0 is uniform distribution, uniformly distributed. The number of absentees during a week are 300 and if absenteeism is equal then it should be how much 300 by 5 is equal to 60 on each day. So, just let us see how this you add it up 60 plus 50 110 160 200 270 275 283 287 293 299 maybe uh, I think the 12 or 16 8 24. Uh, make it one of them it is not exactly 300 it was approximate 299. So, you can assume it is 300 right. Now, arranging the data you see how it is coming now 66 57 it is written over there uh, ok this was I think there was a mistake here. So, this is 57 actually right. So, you can see here it is 57. So, now so that comes 300 this is also 300. So, equally divided now. So, this when you calculate the O minus E is 6 minus 3 minus 6 minus 12 minus 15. So, this O minus E square we have calculated and divided by the expected this is the chi square value. So, we have got a 7.5 chi square value. So, the critical value of chi square at 5 percent level of significance with a degree of freedom at 5 minus 1 is equal to 4 this is nothing but the n minus 1 right so, 4 is how much in a 9.49. So, since calculated value is 7.5 and the critical value is 9.49 the null hypothesis is within the acceptance region. So, it is to be accepted that there is no difference or there is a uniformity right. So, what is the null hypothesis saying the absence is uniformly distributed now yes the absence is uniformly distributed that is what the null hypothesis says and it has been accepted right. Okay. So, this is what uh, we talked about a chi square test right what I will do is I will try to show you how to conduct a chi square test right on the uh, SPSS. Now, let us look at this data. Now, the same data which I was talking about now gender there are two genders for example, let us go to the variable view. Now, gender 0 is female 1 is male right and when you come to opinion 1 is entertaining 2 is educational 3 is waste of time ok. Now, what are we saying to do a chi square test we need to cross check ki whether there is an association between opinion and the gender that means do females speak differently and males speak differently or they are similar right. So, to do that just go to analyze go to descriptive statistics and you find here cross tabs right. So, when you talk take cross tabs you take this 2 into the 2 column and row right it does not matter which one you take where it uh, actually does not matter. So, now let us go to the statistics. So, I need the chi square right. So, you can see there are several things for example, the phi is coefficient contingency coefficient, but uh, I am not requiring all these things. So, I will just go with the continue right. So, now let us see ki what is the uh, test value which has come. Now, when we have taken the case processing summary says n is 60. So, there are no missing values 100 percent and gender opinion cross tabulation it says ki female who found female uh, who said entertaining is 7 male 14. So, total 21 educational 15 and 8 23 waste of time 5 and 11 16 right. So, total female were 27 total males are 33 entertaining who said who said entertaining the total of entertaining uh, opinion is 21 is uh, educational 23 and waste of time is 16.
So, is there any association? Do we uh, can we say? Now, let us check, check the Pearson's chi square. Now, when you look at the Pearson's chi square, the with the degree of freedom of two, and you have a point zero four six. So, when the p value is it is a two tailed test right. So, when the p value is uh, 0 0.046 right then it means that the null hypothesis is lesser than the 5 percent level of significance. So, the null hypothesis is rejected. Now, if it is rejected what do we mean in this case? In this case we mean that if it is rejected that means there is a difference between the opinion regarding entertainment, educational and waste of time between male and female right. So, this is what we have learnt through this output and this is how you should write that at particular degree of freedom and level of significance the table value is this much and the calculated value is this much. Since the table value is lesser than the calculated value, so the calculated value is more right so, and or the p value is more it is to be rejected. Now, we come to another test called the McNamara test. Now, McNamara test is a very interesting test, it is a, it is a very similar to the chi square test because it follows a chi square distribution, but the only thing is this McNamara test is a 2 cross 2 uh, you know uh, uh, structure. It is a non parametric test for paired nominal data used when you are interested in finding a change in proportion for the paired data. For example, you could use this test to analyze retrospective case control studies where each treatment is paired with a control that means before and after let us say a case of before and after right. Say what happened? What was your health? How was your health your weight before you took some protein diet and what was your health after you took some protein diet right. It is it can it, it could also be used to analyze an experiment where two treatments are given to the matched pairs. This test is sometimes referred to as McNamara's chi square test because it has a chi square distribution right ok. So, what are the assumptions? The three assumptions are you have one categorical dependent variable with two categories that is it is a dichotomous variable and one categorical independent variable with two related groups. So, as I said it is a two cross two matrix basically right. Now, this is a case example of dichotomous variables include perceived safety of helmets. So, two groups are there one who feels safe and the other one is unsafe right. So, safety of helmet. Now, exam performance for example, two groups pass or fail right. So, these are the two dichotomous variables. The two groups in the dependent variable must be mutually exclusive in other words participants cannot appear in more than one group. Suppose, if you are passed then you cannot be fail obviously, logically right. So, your sample must be a random sample. Note, if your data does not meet those three assumptions considering running another test for your data like a regular chi square test is preferred ok. How do you run the McNamara test? Your data should be placed into a 2 cross 2 contingency table with the cell frequencies equaling the number of pairs. For example, a researcher is testing a new medication a new medication new medication records if the drug worked yes if it worked right no it did not work right. A table is set up with the count of individuals before and after being given the medication. So, when before uh, the medicine what was the condition after the medicine was given what is the condition right. So, if you see it looks like a chi square right. So, what is the formula saying b minus c square by b plus c. So, these are the values of the uh, cell right ok. Now, drug 1 drug 2 right. Now, what was the effect yes no no yes no yes. So, there are four conditions. So, this a uh, we are not interested with this you know no no and yes yes case right. Uh, <coughs> so, if you see b and c b and c b and c these two b and c what is said are used to calculate the state statistic right and these are called the discordant. This is not required this is not to be used right this no yes yes no. So, that is where the difference on thought process lies ok. The other pairs A and D do not tell us whether the treatment is helpful or not obviously, it is both saying the same thing no no yes yes. So, it does not tell us any difference. So, the McNamara's test is what now B minus C now go to this B minus C square by B plus C. So, what is the value from the above said B is how much 100. So, B is uh, B minus C 
square by b plus c that equals to 100 sorry 100 minus c is how much 10 square upon 100 plus 10. So, that is equal to 90 square divided by 110. So, how much it has come? So, 73.63 right. Now, you can compare it with the uh, value and see ki whether this uh, is uh, actually uh, you know the hypothesis is coming true or not, whether the hypothesis is to be accepted or not. So, there are several cases where McNamara test uh, comes to use, it is as good like a chi square test, but only problem is that it is only a 2 by 2 uh, case and uh, it cannot uh, handle more than uh, you know uh, more number of uh, a larger contingent table right, like a 3 cross 3 or a 2 cross 4 or 2 cross 5 it cannot handle, that is the only difference. Well, what I will do is, what we will do is in the next uh, lecture. Uh, I will show you a few more uh, you know tests how to do cover them in the uh, you know software. For example, the McNamara test uh, I had forgotten to do the Wilcoxon test also sign rank test and uh, then I will follow the case test and then uh, non parameter test gets over there and then we will start with the next uh, from there the experimental uh, design right. So, well thank you for today and uh, we will see in the meet in the next class. Thank you so much.